now we'll move on to the second section of the meeting, which is table topics. This is where you learn your impromptu skills, speaking on the spot, interview type things, all that. And to lead that, we'll have our table topics master, Nadia. Like, you're just trying to take a personality test to be like, oh, I wonder what great traits are going to tell me I have. And then it's like you actually have to think about yourself to get the, the traits. It's kind of annoying. So I'm going to make y'all do it. Okay. <laughs> um, should I explain the old Okay. So I'm going to give you a statement, and then you're going to say if you agree or disagree with that statement, for what reason, if you partly agree, if you partly disagree, how strongly you agree. And you have a minute and 30 seconds to talk about it. And there's a 30 second grace period. I'm gonna just call y'all up now. So, the first thing is, do you agree or disagree with this statement? I want to win the approval of those in authority, sometimes even when I don't really like them. And Slate Nations, come on up and answer. Mm. This is true as a self-reflection because I think in every scenario it's an important value to me to just really hold, hold dear to the person of authority. Like no matter if it's a club or if it's just like a personal figure, like even just like your parents or just even like honestly I look like authority figures can be anyone really, just anyone you're talking to. So just in that aspect, I really think you need to really went over their appeal and you want to get on their good side really so not as far as boot licking of course but like you, you want to you know look like a good person and you know you want to understand their side and be where they are and so I think that that's a good self-reflection of how I view that and how I think others should as well so yeah. Next question is, what's the difference between authority, I mean approval, and admiration? Is it important for you to be admired by others just as much as it is to gain someone's approval? And what's the difference? And I'm gonna ask Claudia to come on up. <laughs> just because, I mean, anyone can say that they approve of what you do, but do they really? Um, I just appreciate having, like, a loving personality and, like, people admiring kind of who I am or, like, what I do rather than, rather than them like everything that I do, if that makes sense. Um, I appreciate disagreement and, like, people disagreeing with me, so you don't necessarily have to approve of everything I do or, like, everything that I want or everything I like, but kind of you just admire the way that I think. I think I appreciate that more than, you know, like, if we agree on everything. Um, so, yeah. I think approval doesn't really matter as much as admiration because I think the best friendships and best relationships come out of admiration instead of approval. Okay. Claudia. Most close relationships, I give more than I can take. Okay, and can I see your other hand? No. All right, come on up. Um, most in most close relationships, I give more than I can take. Um, that's an interesting question. Very deep. There may be a lot of levels to this question. Now, on the surface level, you give more than you could take. 
Let's go with time. I give a lot of my time in relationships. A lot of close, a lot to my like close friends. Um, let's see. Like I give my time. I go out to eat with them, even though I don't like eating outside. Don't really like food that much. I'm more of a, you know, I'm more of like a fake vegan because I like eating salad. Dri- like, I like eating salad without the dressing part. Like, like plain broccoli. So I don't like going out to. Um, restaurants, don't like movies, don't like a lot of that stuff that my friends do, but I do it because it's, they're my friends and I like to enjoy what they do. So I give a lot of my time to them. Now, the things that I like to do, I like to do alone. Um, like, I enjoy my friends, I enjoy like what, like, the com- com- whatever, that word. Um, like, I enjoy, like, I want to go skiing, I'll join my friends being there. But I won't get as much fun as from it if like they're right there because you know they're not gonna be like as much, as daring as I am and like want to go down the big slope even though you know this is our first time skiing we might break a leg or something and, you know I really don't care or I like watching SpongeBob a lot of people in college don't really like watching SpongeBob so in that sense like I can't take them being like, oh, Spongebob is stupid when they're looking at it in a negative way rather than you look at it a positive way like I do and and then that way you get like something out of Spongebob, you get something out of everything you do. So maybe um, I need new friends, maybe. <laughs> but a lot of times, you know, I can't take as much, I can't take as much of their time as I can. Thank you. trying to get that down. I'm trying to be nicer, try to be kind. When Tyler was like, write your goals, my first one was super easy, was be kind. (laughs) But would you agree with this statement? Your happiness and your feelings are your responsibility, not mine. Ryan, would you come on up here? (laughs) Can you repeat the question? Mm -hmm. Your happiness and your feelings are your responsibility, not mine. Yeah, I think this kind of relates to what Tyler was saying. I think you're responsible for your own happiness, emotions, well-being. And in a way, there may be a, it may not be your fault, or something maybe out of your control, but you're still responsible for your reaction to that. And I think that was a really powerful message. I love that part in your speech. So to extend on that, uh, absolutely your feelings are, uh, in con- you're in control of your feelings. It's, it's not my job to control that, it's yours. I think those who are able to control that are the most successful people. So we should all work on getting better at our reactions to things, our reactions to events. It's not how many times you get punched in the face, but how many times you get back up, and your reaction to everything that happens in life. So there's so many things that are out of our control. In my probability speech, I'm learning about statistics and probability, and it's so interesting how many things in our life are random, and how much is up to random chance. So the more you can learn that and react to it, and just kind of constantly be positive in your attitude of life, the happier you'll be, the more successful you'll be, and the better off you'll be. <laughs> um, for this next one, I kind of want to ask for volunteers after I ask the question, so just choosing y'all out, because I know sometimes it's hard to talk about. So the theme is reflection, so I want to ask you, is, <laughs> is there anything when you look in the mirror you're unhappy about and how you overco- overcame it or how you, cho- like how you plan to overcome it? Is there anyone that, that can come up here? All right, Tyler, come on up. It's my chest. I look in the mirror, and I look at my chest, and I'm saying, boy, Tyler, you flat as a board, son. 
You need to need to get some bench press in. You need to get some some sort of you know push ups. Get a get a pump going before you go to class or something, man. But you need a bigger chest. No, really though, I I I've lifted a lot of weights. I've been lifting weights since high school, and my chest has been that muscle group that I just for whatever reason I have not been able to develop. I mean, as it is, I'm already you know a skinny guy, so putting on muscle is is pretty hard. I'm not gonna lie, and and so. The, the pectoral muscles are definitely something that when I literally look in the mirror, I'm like, boy, son, I'm going to bring out the 2 by 4 put it there every day to see how far out it's, it's gone. But, uh, but no. Uh, how do you plan on overcoming that? Oh, how do I plan on overcoming that? Well, I'm trying right now. Uh, I just started a strength cycle. Um, Eating a lot more protein, eating more, and focusing more on my pectorals when I work out, and diversifying instead of just doing bench press. I think bench press and push ups aren't doing it. So that's the current current goals. That's like everything else in my life. But yeah, I'm glad to report that. Thank you. Like I said, I'm very confrontational, so I'm in a lot of conflict, and I'm just wondering, is there anyone that could agree with this statement? I tend to avoid conflict, and can you come up and answer this? <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Kendria. Um, I definitely am a type of person to avoid conflict just because I'm kind of more on the shy side. I don't really like public speaking or talking in crowds, but I'm trying to like get better at that. Um, so yeah, I definitely would say I uh, tend to avoid conflict, um, but um, yeah. Um, Give an example of a time you avoided conflict. Um, yeah, I guess I can give an example. <laughs> um, I guess it's a little personal, that's okay. Um, <laughs> yesterday I actually had a fight with um, my ex-boyfriend because he wanted me to do something that I didn't really want to do. And I kind of like shut down for a little while and I was thinking like I probably shouldn't do that. So, but, um, yeah, so that was probably, I probably shouldn't have shut down during the a struggle that I intend to win. Come on up. <laughs> oh, hey all, I'm Ethan. So uh, Ryan actually invited me here. So life as a conflict I intend to win. Mm -hmm. So I mean if you think about it, life, well, evolution. So we, we are the way we are right now because life just, it's a competition. Survival of the fittest, the strongest, or the, the most, who can adapt the most, come to the front. So, I mean, you, you try to do that, you're coming to college to not necessarily be the best at what you do, but you're trying to be better, you're trying to learn. Um, you think about it, you go to the gym, not necessarily, I don't agree with the part that beating everyone else, but it's, it's for you, for me at least. So, we're coming here, survival of the fittest, we're coming here not to necessarily be the best at public speaking, but we're trying to get better. We're trying to just, that Darwinian, Darwininism, <laughs> that, that's the word for it. So, um, I don't know, that's about all I got. <laughs> you're probably not going to come to this club <laughs> and you're probably not going to want to be put on the spot. But I do know that a lot of people are very introspective and really like to think about their actions or like to watch a room or as a situation plays out before acting on it. So I want to ask someone, do you agree with this statement? 
I want to observe and think without giving myself away before I go into action. And so we have a little time. And come on up. Come on, come on. <laughs> For a spectrum from 100% disagree to 100% agree, I would say 100% agree because I am that kind of person who, when in interviews, I will pause before after the interviewer has asked a question and I will think about the answer maybe for like 10 seconds, 30 seconds, and then I'll give a response. And I know most people don't do this because a lot of people are really good at impromptu speaking, but for me personally, I'm not someone who thinks aloud. I'm someone who thinks on paper, I'm someone who thinks visually, and I prefer to write my words better than I prefer to speak them out loud. So this is the reason why I do really well on essays, but I do not do really well on publications. It's the reason I do really well on written applications, and I don't do as well in interviews. And so I think this world is structured, especially America, to really cater to extroverts and to cater to people who are really good at speaking. And I'll give props to those people. Speaking is an incredible skill, and I admire people who can do it really well, people who are really good storytellers, and people who are able to just articulate a thought immediately. But for me personally, I was just made to look at the situation, observe it from all different points of view, and then think of my own point of view. And with that, that is how I would answer that question. Taking risks? You yeah, I don't mind taking risks. Because I like to beat the odds. Hmm. Don't like taking risks because I don't like to beat the odds. I probably messed it up. You I do like <laughs> taking risks because I really like to beat the odds. I really like to beat the odds. The total opposite. <laughs> okay. So it's so important to take risks. My favorite quote is those who are scared to take risks accomplish nothing in life. I forgot who it was written by or spoken by, whatever. But you have to take risks. Life is all about courage. As the young man said earlier, we may be dealt a hand, but we have to be able to have the courage to fight through it, take on that responsibility. I believe that, you know, I have so much potential. There's so much potential in you. There's so much potential in you. And we have to, un we have to cultivate that every day. We have to unleash that. But we can only do that by taking courageous steps. You guys all came here today. You all decided to come up with your speeches, or our wonderful speeches, but those are the, the little steps, the little risks that must be taken for us to like accomplish our biggest and greatest goals and aspirations. So I definitely agree with your statement because odds are in a way relative to our perspective in our current situation. But when we get to the other side of the, the wave, we'll look back and we'll be like, oh, wow, that wasn't that bad. But like when we're looking at the mountain, we're like, wow, you know, it's so big. And, you know, we just have to let life take us and take advantage of the small opportunities. Again, coming here today, taking advantage of your classroom, speaking up. For me, getting down here is a big step. So appreciate you guys for listening. and I made all of them like actually really introspective, there wouldn't be any funny speeches. I mean, I was wrong, but also I realized it's a lot harder because <laughs> you have to be like, oh yeah, I suck. <laughs> I suck. <laughs> so, please welcome up Brian as, no, no. Oh, Tyler, please welcome up Tyler. <laughs>
round of applause for Nadia, and also leave some feedback on the feedback slips and pass them in for Table Topics Master. Some of these answers are like poetic. Like, dang. <laughs> <laughs>